All right, uh, what is up, guys? This is Jake. Welcome to episode number seven of the Warcry Games podcast. Move along, guys. Up to seven now. Woo! Um, so Woo! joining me today, we got Brandon. What's up, dude? Yo, what up? Brandon and John, how are you this morning? Fine and dandy. Fine you guys dandy. miss me? Yeah. Miss you yeah, so much, while, buddy. Welcome back. Yeah, yeah. That's a lie. But okay, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, no, man. Well, who are Actually we going to talk about Death Stranding with, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This one's actually going to be pretty dedicated towards John, at least a good section of it, because we all kind of passed podcast. off our, yeah, oh, we did boy. our top five, so this is going to be John, oh, uh, his uh, top five. Quick rundown of the topics for this episode. Uh, first up, per the usual, we're going to talk about what games we've been playing this week, then move on to the best bit, where we're going to go over the best of something in video games. Um, after that, we got John, like I said, covering his uh, five favorite games of the past decade, uh, the same thing we did last week, and there's going to be a new twist for John, something different than we did last week. And then uh, oh, we're going to move into the War Cry, where we introduce a topic that's going to be designed to spark a debate between us. It's the same one we mentioned last week about uh, like storytelling and video games. And then uh, we're going to tackle a subscriber Q&A we missed from last week before closing up. All the links to the talking points are going to be in the description below. Let us start off with games we've been playing. John. What you got, man? Okay. What you been playing this week? So, um, besides the typical Call of Duty, I started Life is Strange. Yeah. Nice. Started Life is Strange. It's, Let's hear it. Let's hear well, the uh, impressions, I mean, man. It, dude. Oh, it's I, still early, right? Literally, like, literally, like I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even like an hour in. So, like, I, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to say nothing. too much because there's nothing. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing much to talk about right now. But first impressions, um, I will say it is an. I, I like I said, I'm not going to make any conclusions yet, but. Um, the atmosphere is kind of interesting, like that whole first scene where, you know, you, you see the the bustling uh, uh, the hallway and everything, like your typical high school. And, and I was put your headphones in. She puts the headphones in, and oh, then all yes, of a sudden it dude. just goes, it just flats out and cancels. I thought that was kind of neat, um, stuff like that. So, but and again, work in progress because I literally just started that. Um, I picked up Gravity Rush Ooh, on sale. Gravity, Gravity Rush. Rush remastered. And I forgot on PlayStation. Um, yeah, for the PS for the PS4, and I originally had it for the Vita, but considering I don't really play my Vita anymore, and this is probably better in, in high definition, I picked it up for I think it was like four bucks or five bucks. I forgot the exact price, but it was it's you know I forget how how good of a game that is. Um, just the combat and the whole gravity aspect of it. It's very unique. Um, the soundtrack. Oh my God, the soundtrack. Yeah. That is it's it's. It's crazy enough that I like I went onto Apple Music and sure enough I think it's on Apple Music the soundtrack so it's like a good soundtrack to just kind of just like put in the background while you're working or doing whatever. Um, let's see, moving along. Dude, uh, Brandon's big something. on that, like soundtracks, oh, yeah. soundtracks. video games. Oh, really? if, you, if you didn't know that, oh. yeah, oh, we're, we have I got like playlists worth of game music just on my phone. I will listen to, pull them out oh, anytime. Hell yeah. Yeah, I've seen I John do that with Chrono Trigger, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah I got... So, well, dude, I got... Not side tangent, but I have Chrono Trigger. I have, like, a, a whole playlist about Chrono Trigger remixes, Chrono Trigger arranged orchestral versions. Like, I have all of that shit. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. Wow. Yeah, but so that's tangent. what... I mean, so, sorry. So, just keeping as a, like a side ta- on that side tangent, I think video game music is perfect for, like, you know, just mm-hmm. doing tasks because mm-hmm. yeah. it was composed to be repetitive. It was composed not to get tiring after mm-hmm. four or five mm-hmm. loops so you know yeah, yeah. but um anyways so the, the the big thing that i've been playing that i think it's worth mentioning today um is rogue sky now this is an indie hmm. game that was um it was released for pc i believe ps4 and uh and nintendo switch and it re- recently got a price cut uh on nintendo's holiday sale Rogue Sky is basically like, um, it's, it's like, how do I put it? It's kind of like Ace Combat, but, you know, mm. uh, simplified, like heavily simplified. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of planes in the game that, that look similar to planes you've seen in like anime and whatnot without, you know, <laughs> specifically <laughs> calling it such. Like, I think they have a ship in the game that looks very, very similar to, uh, that ship in Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Go. And then I think the, the ship that I got now looks like a ship from uh, from Macross Plus. So, um, w- w- I mean, obviously without, Cowboy you know, Bebop, I mean, you can't say. use the name, but 
Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean, it, there's that, and then like the whole graphical style is that of. Um, it reminds me a lot of this game from 1994 called Wing War by Sega, using the Model One architecture. Model One is the. Um, if, for those that don't know, it's the. It was the. It was the. It was the. The system board architecture that Sega used for their first gen polygonal stuff like. Um, uh, like virtual fighter, virtual racing, you know, um, which actually, by the way, which is a, is a really good port on Nintendo Switch. If you guys hmm. um, want a really solid racing, racing game for, I think it's like, I don't know, it's like under ten dollars. Um, you know, people can correct me on that. I, I I'm, I'm bad <laughs> with remembering prices, but anyways, so um, it has that like polygonal, like flat shaded polygon aesthetic to it. It, it, it it's neat because it's a good pick up and play game i never understood the decision to um put it on like the pc and steam because it's really like one of those games where i pick it up I'm, i have the switch i'm out and about um like yesterday i was out at you know shopping with my family and you know um we had we had i had like some off time so i pulled out the switch did a mission you know put it back in put it back in and you can upgrade your ship and you know you can buy new ships there's like a currency so I thought that was neat, you know, it's not a bad way to spend, I think, it was, yeah, wh whatever it was I spent on it. Um, mm -hmm. And then, of course, Death Stranding. Uh, Death Stranding. Say there. <laughs> what's new with Death Stranding, in, though? Like, what's, uh, have you progressed 80 hours somewhere? in? 80? Yeah, 76, I think, is the thing. Holy I'm, I'm crap, sorry. dude. What was that, Jake? Holy crap. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's all it's all about building roads. So, so like I'm at chapter six right now, and I thought I was at the end of the game pretty much, and it turns out there's like fourteen chapters. So, <laughs> wait, I, what I chapter? Yeah, you said eight. Chapter six. six. Chapter six, and there's fourteen. Yeah. Jesus, dude. So, <laughs> what's yeah? I need to I need to not do side quests anymore. I mean, I, I keep getting I keep getting hey, caught man, up in like soak it in, roads. soak it in, enjoy it, man. That, you There's know that we uh, Jake and I were talking about this at work, and we we're like, um, we we're like, I'm I'm like the kind of I'm like the kind of person too. I guess I I never thought I was this kind of person, but like when I'm playing a game, I just want to I don't want to leave the experience behind. Mm -hmm. So you know, you that's, why I, I, that's why I keep doing all the side quests. I'm like, and then when I when I want to finally like finish the game, you know, then I'll actually finish the story. Right. But I don't know. Anyways, that that's it. That's all I've been playing. Good Interesting, stuff. man. Good stuff, dude. <laughs> build roads, you, Brandon. Build connections. Build bridges. Yeah, seriously. All right, I got three games I want to talk oh about. Um, so number one, I mentioned it earlier, but I did finish it this past week. Uh, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, and I did finish the Donkey Kong Adventure DLC. Dude, how do you like that? Because nice. I just yeah. picked it up. So Not the DLC though. Um, DLC is worth getting if you like the main game. It's just essentially more of the same with like a little bit of twist in terms of the mechanics um, and some more unique puzzles and things like that. I think it is a very well-made game. Uh, I applaud the presentation, the soundtrack, and I, I'll be honest, like there are definitely funny moments in that game. It's a very quirky kind of slapstick humor, um, and I did laugh at parts in the game, so I, I'll, I'll give the game a lot of credit for that. The gameplay itself... I'm personally not a huge strategy fan. Fire Emblem is a, as far as I typically go in the strategy genre. I kind of knew what this was getting into it, and that's the reason I'm picking it up so late is because I typically don't play those types of strategy-heavy games like yeah. XCOM. Like those never really appeal to me, yeah. and this didn't really change my perception on those types of games. I'm, just, you know, I've played like RTSs like StarCraft, and it's just that style of gameplay. Um, where you like really have to outthink your opponent and really have to think like five moves ahead just can be like a little draining over time like if you're very like if you love like puzzle style games where you're really critically thinking every second of the game like this is a perfect type game for that for you sometimes i just kind of like to turn my brain off um I'll, I mean, I'll be honest, we talked about game difficulty before. This is one genre I don't really like to crank up the difficulty because it just is, like, exhausting to always be on your feet, constantly having to retry missions and things like that. Mm. So I did do kind of, like, the extra health modes uh, for most of these missions where you can just, like, get more health at the beginning of the mission. Um, but if you do that, it really doesn't – it's not that challenging. With that extra health, you, you have to think a little bit. Uh, but the way – if for those who don't know, I think you know, we talked about this, but it is very um, – you're kind of around a board, and you can move your characters around the board and then 
per once per turn you can attack the enemy or dash into an enemy and do specific uh, character actions. So it's kind of like a very advanced version of chess where the game board is not flat static. You can jump, you can go left and right and kind of move around a lot more than you would on a normal chess board. So it, again, gameplay wise, it was fun. I think the parts that I enjoyed most, as I mentioned, were the presentation. Soundtrack is killer. It's just they really have some yeah. awesome Mario remixes yeah. in there. Um, and I'll call out the Donkey Kong Adventure DLC. They love, uh, they actually believe they worked with David Wise, uh, who was one of the composers for Donkey Kong Country. Uh, might be off on that, but I'm, I'm almost positive. Yeah, and, I think so. I think you're right. Yeah, like, even Easy I, A's were, was talking about that. He's like super renowned in the field for. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, um, and they did some amazing remixes with the Donkey Kong Country style music and themes and things like that. So the music presentation, uh, it's a it's a gorgeous looking game for coming out early in the Switch's life cycle. Um, so if you're into those strategy games now with the DLC, th so here's indicative of, of my playstyle, right? As we were just joking about before, if I love a game, I want to spend more time in that world, right? I beat this game, and usually I'm like a hundred percenter with games I love. I beat the stories, and I was like, okay, I'm good. Like, there's all these extra like challenge rooms that could like really push you. Like, if you really want to think hard, yeah. I was like, you know what? There's no extra story. There's no extra jokes involved. So I'm just gonna like finish with the story, and I'm, I'm very happy with the purchase because of that. But that sh goes to show you the types of gameplay and the types of genres that I typically gravitate towards. So that's number one. Uh, number two is Ring Fit Adventure. This oh, guy. my God. So, <laughs> you in shape, man? Well, Jake, you probably I'm know squats this, coming. I'm, actually, dude. All right. Let, I heard it's pretty legit. Things. Yeah. Let me say a few things here. So, Jake, Sorry. you know this. I, I'm, like a, I'm, like, big into fitness. Like, to me, like, yeah. exercise is a big part of my life. I like, try to go to the gym often, do outdoor things, mountain biking, skiing, things like that. So Ring Fit, I've, I've like played Wii Fit in the past, and I like wasn't sold on Wii Fit. And Ring Fit Adventure, I keep hearing buzz about it. Like, hey, this game's actually pretty fun. Like, the mechanics are pretty yeah. unique. And the way that it sets it up is actually pretty engaging. So I'd say, you know, hell, I like fitness. And I like video games. Let's give it a try. I will say, so I've played Wii Fit, Ring Fit Adventure, um, every day since Christmas. So, you know, the past four, four days or so. Um, and I really, really enjoy the game. I'll be honest, you have to have a certain mindset going into it, knowing it's a fitness game. And I think for me, like, I enjoy fitness, so it's kind of like the best of both worlds. It's like, hey, I wake up, I kind of want to, you know, get some exercise today, rather than, like, going down the street to a gym or something. Why don't I just do some of these exercises? And me, I'm kind of a masochist when it comes to exercise, so I set the difficulty very high, because it's like, hey, I'm a fit person. If you set the difficulty high, it will definitely push you. Like, I'm doing... I think I've already done like 200 squats since the, it, you know, 200 squats, 200 um, like le leg to chest type things, my abs, my upper, my inner arms, my deltoids, like all these different muscles that I don't always work at the gym. Um, the, the accessory that it comes with, the ring con, is extremely durable. And that's, I think, the biggest thing that I was surprised at. I was like, this is, you know... This Some doesn't cheap plastic like or something. Yeah, cheap or... plastic is going to come with this thing. It is very, very durable. And so when I try to do some of these exercises where you're pushing your arms in, you're pushing your arms together, you feel it. And the way that they ramp up the difficulty is, you know, if you're on hardcore mode, which is like I'm like difficulty 30 out of 30. I, I don't know what the highest is, but I'm like really high difficulty. They make you do like like 40 reps to like beat the oh enemy. So oh, you're like, dang. hey. You better be like the only way to beat this enemy is 40 reps. So like, good luck, buddy. I'd hand this so, shit off to my cousin and be like, "Hey, have at it, man." Yeah, just do it. For <laughs> I will say, I will say. So the other comment I'll make here is, I'm I'm home for the holidays, so I'm with my parents, and I think I've talked about this before. My parents not really into video games. My mom is like interested in fitness, so she comes in, uh, and it's funny. I was like, "All right, mom, like, why don't you give this a try?" And so she actually got into it. She enjoyed. She didn't like like the mini games as much. But the way that they set up, like, the battles, it's essentially just to do this much damage, you have to do 40 reps of this thing. And she actually really enjoyed. She said, she's like, hey, for your podcast, sell them, like, I'd give this game an A out of, like, uh, you know, if I was going to rank it. I'm an like, A out of 10, man. Love it. Yeah, an A, an a <laughs> out of 10. <laughs> a out of 10. Yeah. Um, and so she she was actually, she was like, yeah, I actually felt a burn in my arms and, like, I felt a burn in my chest. So it is designed to really encourage you know consistent reps and the the um 
the accessories and everything, the way the game is designed does kind of push you to go beyond your limits. And that's one thing for people unlike me, maybe like my mother and people who, who aren't as big into fitness, this type of game is actually really good for put for challenging you and for pushing you past. Because if you're just like working out at home, you're like, oh, I'm gonna do 10 reps. But the game's like, no, if you want an A or if you wanna kill this enemy, like you gotta do 15, buddy. And so it really pushes you to uh, do those types of um, exercises to go beyond your limits. So Brandon, no. two questions. Yep. Sorry. Go so ahead. two questions. First, the quality of the reps. Does it, does it know that you're doing like a good rep? Yeah, or? that's actually something I've been pretty impressed with. Now, I'm sure there's ways to cheat it. I'm sure if you take the strap off and like don't even do the exercise at all. But that's why I say you have to be in a certain mentality. I think if you buy this game, you are you at least have a passing interest in like trying to be fit and trying yeah. to do the exercises. And that's actually something that I love about it is like if I were to go to a gym, I really need a personal trainer to tell me you're doing the squat low enough or you're doing this push up like good enough, right? The fact that they have the sensor on your leg and you're holding this, it's very clear or it seems to be very clear, um, there's visual indicators that's like, nope, you're not pushing hard enough or you're not squatting low enough. And so it's very clear. And the way they do it, Jake, you'll appreciate this. Your p character basically goes Super Saiyan when you're doing it right. <laughs> yeah. So, so if, you're, if you're pushing the... Or uh, Yeah, you, you, your hair awesome. like goes on fire. What? And you basically like become Super oh, Saiyan. Wow. So the way every rep you do... It, like if I was doing these um, these pushes, I don't know what the hell they're called, right? But if you're pushing the the ring con together, if you're not pushing hard enough, your hair is just like kind of red. But as soon as you push in hard enough, like your hair just sparks on. Gotta fire. go Super like, Saiyan, man. Gotta, gotta do go. it. And, yeah, rep. exactly. So I'm looking at, it, I'm like, all right, like train like Goku, <laughs> train like Vegeta. I got this shit, <laughs> and I'm like pushing this ring con together, like trying to get ripped. So um, second question to yep. the the game. So you, you said as a game, it, it holds up. If, if if you took out the whole like ring RPG, gimmick, man. the yeah. game holds up on its own as like an RPG. It's not gonna be like your Skyrim and Witcher. Let's just level right. set okay. there. The way that you progress in the adventure mode, which is the primary campaign, you're actually running through a guided path, and then like, hey, there's an obstacle. Squeeze the thing to jump over it. Uh, hey, there's something that you're gonna have to do high knees to run through mud. You're like actually running through an environment and there's like interactive, interactive elements in the environment. Like, hey, there's rings over there. Why don't you um, suction those up with your ring con? And so you're actually like, ex yes, it's a linear path, but you're like looking around and okay. interacting with the environment. And then the way that they get the fitness uh, reps in is every time you do a, a level in an adventure mode, you'll run into enemies. And as soon as you do an enemy encounter, it's like a turn-based RPG where your attacks are a fitness exercises. So they'll attack you and you have to like guard doing a fitness thing. And to attack them back, you have to do reps of an exercise. And they even add like an extra strategy layer, like, hey, if their color is red, you need to, do, or you should do a red exercise, which like red is arms, blue is legs, oh, okay. yellow is oh. core. Kind of like an so, elemental type thing. I yeah, guess exactly, yeah. exactly. But the way that you do an element is a different part of your body. So like, all the it's red cool. stuff is like my arms are going to be ripped. So there's five red enemies. That's clever, actually. Yeah. You can do leg exercises. That's fine. But you'll kill the enemies much faster if you do all arm exercises. Man. Okay. This might actually get me to start exercising, Jake. Yeah, you think? I'm just saying. I, it's fun, <laughs> How much man. is it? Um, it, it's more than sixty dollars. I think it's seventy or eighty because of the accessory. The I thing. think it's yeah. worth it because, again, for me, I was impressed with how well it sensed your ability and like where you are in the rep. Like I said, the Super Saiyan like throttle. Like as soon as you get there, it's like, yep, you're. Because it's funny, right? Because my when my mom tried it, she's like, oh, like I'm, not, I'm like, mom, you're not doing it hard enough. Like it could tell, and she like wasn't getting as many points, and she she was frustrated. She's like, oh, it ranked me as a C or whatever. I'm like, eh, well, if you like did the full pulled. The get whole, good, mom. You, know, you gotta get super saiyan. Get you know? good, mom. <laughs> get, get mom. That's a show yeah. title right there. Get good, mom. Yeah. Get good, mom. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but overall, I really enjoyed it. Again, I'm typically into fitness, so like, for me, it wasn't so much like challenging me to go outside my comfort zone. But it definitely works. Muscles I don't usually work, and it's adding a fun level. You know, especially if like there's a snow day or something, I can't go to the gym. Like this yeah. is what really what I bought this for, right? If there's a, a day I can't go to the gym, I can't do my normal routine, or maybe I like. You know, I ran, but I'm also looking to do and work some different muscles that I didn't typically work. This is perfect, and Dude, I love it. For I want to hear about your next game, though. I want to hear. I already know yeah. what it is. I want to hear where you you're at. I want to know. 
you know. So game number three is Astral Chain. Oh boy. Yeah, so man. Jake has been hyping this game up, and yeah. it's so funny, Jake, because <laughs> when you started this this playthrough on your channel, I was like, dude, I'm gonna play this game. I can't watch any of your yeah, videos. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It'd be a, it'd be a complete spoiler for you. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so I've been plowing through this game. I think I'm like chapter eight. Holy crap! Chapter man. eight or nine. <laughs> wow. yeah. Um, I just got the last, le or I would assume is the last Legion, because based on the wheel, right? Um, so I just got the last Legion and I've just kind of played around in the next area. So let me say a few things. So I, I was texting you about this. It is very similar to, or it is very reminiscent of Metal Gear Rising crossed with Bayonetta, two platinum games. And I'll tell yep. you why. Yep. Uh, Metal Gear Rising, because of the first Legion that you get is a sword Legion. And you can literally go and change the angle of your cut as its special oh, ability, which nice. is straight out of Metal Gear Rising. Yeah, like that is yeah. that is Metal Gear Rising. Now Platinum made Metal Gear Rising, so they're right, obviously right. borrowing from their other game. So you're changing the angle of your cut. You can slow time to do that straight out of Metal Gear Rising. Yep, yep. And the other thing that you do in this game, if you've damaged an enemy far enough, there's this ability that's finish off when you hit the A button and you finish them off. Your guy literally goes, grabs their core cracks it and and your full health oh, that... which is like the zendatsu from metal gear rising <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like verbatim yeah, yeah john's it's played like, metal hey, gear rising remember we played this game so yeah we played this game, <laughs> now so. it's not a bad thing because i fucking love metal gear rising no, me amazing too. game no it was great it was awesome yeah but like that is like DLC straight that? like yeah. the, the sam dlc oh everything? dude sam dlc so good jet stream oh. sam and then we were playing the the wolf blade wolf oh dude blade yeah. wolf dlc too I good i didn't pick up the blade wolf dlc i regret not Oh, uh, dude, all the DLC for that game is great. Uh, what do you think uh, of the story so far? That seems to be like uh, a lot of people are So hold on, let me, let me just finish. I'll, I'll, I'll finish the other uh, chain, of, chain of thought. Where Bayonetta, every time that you dodge, you can do the slow down mechanic right. and you can counterattack. Very reminiscent of Bayonetta. And some of the enemy yeah. designs, I'm starting to hear, like, you know, what you're saying about, like, being, like, kind of a crazy larger-than-life enemies reminds me kind of of a Bayonetta. Yeah. Style. Story-wise, um, I think it's interesting. It's definitely, you know, very anime-inspired. It's different from maybe some of the other action-style games. Uh, it doesn't... It, it sets itself apart, is what I would say. And I think the police detective angle is something that I haven't seen from Platinum as much. Mm. Those um, detective scenes remind me of the Arkham games and kind of the Witcher 3 detective mode where you're going and looking at clues and trying to piece them together. Mm. Now, the one thing I'll say is it doesn't really, like, punish you if you, like, mess that up completely. Yeah. I think it's just, like, the intent of it where it's like, hey, I'm a detective. I'm yeah. a policeman. I'm looking at the crime scene. I'm seeing what happened here. I like the angle, so they're really trying to, to be unique about it. It affects your score, and though, right? I thought it does. Probably. Probably that you're ranking. Yeah. But, like, you know, it's, it's not one of those things. That's pretty much all it is about that game is, like, trying to get that yeah. ranking up, your right. combat and all that. But Yeah, yeah. so I, I think it, it's a good... It's a good system for portraying that. I, I think platinum ranking, plat the ranking system has always been a staple of most platinum games. And so it, it holds true here. So it's like, hey, you can rank for your combat or rank for your detective skills. I think that's a good. But realistically speaking, if you don't care about the rank, right. like it's not going to like yeah. change the game. That, that was the same. only point I was making. Um, Story-wise, I think it's interesting. Um, they've uh, they've set some... Uh, what do you... Some kind of clues so kind i kind of, of have an idea happen. yeah i yeah. kind of know what's gonna happen yeah. based on some of the clues and i think that's a that's a mark of a good story is you don't want to be like you know everything completely uh, you know, blindside maybe yeah. i'll be surprised by some of the twists in the end you will um at least a couple <laughs> well that's good yeah i hope so um i think character design is something that i love about platinum games this is no exception the the enemy and character designs and the legion designs are very very cool i will give the game a lot of credit for that and the one thing we we're talking about soundtrack before i love this mix because there's parts in the game where it's like kind of like in cutscenes they'll do like orchestral like sweeping things but then whenever there's a boss it's like heavy metal it's like yeah. let's <laughs> go like let's destroy this guy like badass um and i hands down this is a platinum game through and through so i'd say the, the combat is the best part of the game so far i love the um, audio though man like you were saying yeah. like, there's a lot of moments in the game where and there's some stuff like even uh, my most recent episode like 38 i got to a certain part where they ramped up the audio to something i've not heard before so i amplified it in post yeah. so i put it all the way i was like man this is like really good audio so i made it like just blare blare and post so it's really really good 
it's it's definitely an excellent game. I can see why I got a lot of you know game of the year contender type type noms um it was on the best action game list for the game awards definitely worthy of that from everything i've played so far i'm excited to finish it out but i'm definitely enjoying it. and again i love platinum games so i kind of expected this yeah. um but so far so good well I'm just jumping back into that uh that's the one i'm playing now like i said episode 38 just dropped and yeah man like where i'm at now like obviously no spoilers or anything i'm a little bit above you i'm at uh file 11 and Actually, did I just jump into 12? No, file 11. So file 11, I heard, it, from my understanding, is the final. And then 12 is the epilogue. So essentially what I'm doing... Oh, I'm close, dude. Holy shit. Yeah, it's like right there towards the end. So, <laughs> I'm going to beat it in the next few days. <laughs> yeah. it's a, So like where I'm at, a very interesting game mechanic just introduced itself. Something that was not there wow, this entire late game, game. Late game late game, game mechanic. Game. And that uh, I was like, is wow. rare. It, this was like epic. This was an amazing, amazing uh, thing. I was like, man, I wish I had this. Like, maybe not from the beginning. <laughs> Reminds me of Devil May Cry. Yeah. They do that in Devil May Cry. So, like, without, well, I mean, you think they're going to do the, like a new game plus, maybe? Or you, you that's can, what it I sounds think. like. Or if not new game plus, it, you can go back and play under. Every time you beat uh, a level on, like, say, the platinum standard difficulty, yeah, it opens up a platinum difficulty. ultimate di- difficulty. So you, you can do yeah, just the normal yeah. regular difficulty, then there's platinum standard, and then I think there's platinum ultimate. I don't know yeah. if there's another one above that, but um, I'm just doing platinum Hardcore. standard. And yeah. I, standard is like good. I, I haven't been too right. frustrated. Like that's like a decent difficulty. Like slightly easy if you upgrade your stuff, but like that's it's, it's fine. It's not like terribly hard or terribly easy. Did you go off against a boss like a Cer- Cerebrus? Cerebius? It's yeah, like a wolf. Cerebus. Did you have any issue with him? Dude, I got, I got to be honest, I haven't had I Nothing. haven't really died. I haven't game over yet. I've lost maybe two batteries right. in a fight. Um, he was the first one I lost a battery on. I didn't even know that. I thought like you the lost The first one I lost there. a battery was the one where you have the pools that you can get stuck yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah, you got to use the arm legion. Yeah, right. That was the first time yeah. you get the arm legion and I was like Oh, these goddamn pools. <laughs> Man, that's hard. like because you can't move in them. Yeah. I was like, oh, fucking hell, dude. So yeah. yeah, John, if you like do a cartwheel over it, or you walk over this sludge, this purple thing on the yeah. ground, your yeah. character like slows down and stumbles, and it's a very responsive game in, in certain areas like that. If you run into an NPC, like you stumble, like you'll yeah. run into yeah. them and stumble. And so in the middle of a boss battle, you throw this mechanic in there. There's like all uh. these pools around the ground that you can't <laughs> hit them. Oh, yeah. So, Dude, I straight up switched to the gun. I was like, fuck yeah, it, I'm going yeah. long range. <laughs> so, yeah. I asked this question before, too, when I was on my playthrough. Like, do you get you get upgrades to your gun, right? Because, yeah. like, when I was when I was I playing Astral Chain, I had no use for the gun. You upgrade your gun. At all. Yeah, You so you can go to this girl in the police department, and you can... Uh, uh-huh. So it's the, Actually, I will say, I didn't call this out. The X-Baton is a really cool weapon. Yeah. It switches between three different... You've got the baton, the gun and the gladius mm. so john you upgrade this x baton and so yeah. all of your weapons do more damage it doesn't add um actually i take that back it does add some new moves and jake i was actually going to ask about this mm. have you been doing the um the back forward uh attack and the circle attack for your guy not really they're kind of like hidden moves yeah or uh, i don't you don't know i saw like, that you like, whenever you upgrade your uh, your thing like that'll that'll be like one of the new moves same with like your sword legion and or it's, any of your legions they all have like little moves but i haven't really what done, i realized yeah. is i don't know if it was uh, from my legion getting upgraded or me getting upgraded but when i do the back forward attack it's actually a launcher and that's the only thing in this game that I've found that has a launcher, and it turns it like straight into bayonetta, where it just like <laughs> it pops nice. them up in the air, and you can like just like get with them in the air and just like air combo, air combo, air combo, air combo. I was like, mm. this is platinum. Here we go. Oh, it's, man. it's the only oh. thing that I found that does that. So I was like, all right, this is how we do it. Uh, that's it for like mine. That's pretty much it. You know, kind of super late game. I think I'm um, uh, loading up, ready for the final boss battle because they're like. All right, guys, uh, we're taking the battle to them. We're going towards them. Actually, it's in both the games I'm playing now. It's pretty much like I feel like the same stage, but it's like stock up, get ready, come talk to me when you're ready to go. And I'm like, okay, so that's where I left it on my last (laughs) playthrough. I think 39 will be like the the finale. But yeah, man, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it. It, Yeah, it took you like a week to get up to here. I'm only like three (laughs) chapters above you. It's like four Well, dude, you know my play style too. I typically like play one game and finish it. And yeah, then dude. move on to the next one. Yeah, so, like, one... I beat Mario Rabbits, moved on to this. And Ring Fit Adventure is, like, 
you can only really play 30 minutes until you get tired. So, yeah. <laughs> like, I can't binge that one. <laughs> this one, it's harder because it's, like, one 30-minute or 45-minute episode plus, you know, a couple hours of post and thumbs and metadata and, like, doing all the extra stuff. Yeah. That turns, like, a five-hour uh five hour process into like just one episode span yeah. that out over 38 episode i put like a good hundred plus hours into like just uh building to my create yeah game. i mean whenever you're uploading yeah. videos it's always gonna take longer yeah. yeah or otherwise if i changed that time to be like editing just into like playing the game itself it probably would have been done in what 25 hours or something like that just yeah kind of like that first week or two but that thing is extended it out this thing came out late august like the end of august did you so, pick it up launch? Yeah, day one, man. <laughs> Damn, yeah, you've been playing, dude. And when I first started playing it, it was like every two to three days I'd, I'd publish a new video. But like I said, with like a five-hour turnaround, that's like 15 to 25 hours a week of just like post for that. So now yeah, I usually do like work, one, one to two a week. Yeah, a but that's it for Astral Chain. The other one's Fire Emblem Three Houses. Same kind of thing. Uh, I'm gearing up. So the enemy brought the battle to me. And they tried to attack the Ooh. monastery. Ooh. Tried, didn't work. I fended them off. Here. And I can see, you know, me and Brandon talked about this like off off of uh, camera earlier. But it's a uh, essentially it's darker than I thought. I'll admit to that. Like you, yeah. you get into some battles <laughs> and you're like, oh god, here we go. Dude, the tw- the <laughs> plot in in this new Fire Emblem game is is definitely the most you know involved of of any of the that they've created. And he was like, Brandon was like, hey, you know, uh, what was your quote? Um, this game's not was, very dark, you know, my, my yeah, playthrough's not yeah, very quote dark. Ja- no, yeah, 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 I literally just, like, quoted verbatim. Jake was like, yeah, this shit happened. And I just, like, texted him back, just like, oh, this game's not that dark, quote Jake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it gets there. <laughs> but, so after yeah. I fended them off, I've already been in Eastern Kingdom, I've already been back. Um, they came to attack me, I already got rid of them. So now, it's like, okay, our next thing Going is... Going north. Yeah. March north, so that that's like that's gonna be like the next thing. Uh, don't know how much further it is in the game from there. I've still been doing side stuff, like every time, every week that you go through, explore the monastery, go do two battles, you know, come back, maybe do like the seminar or something like that. Like every like every week, I'm doing something, but now it's like mission select, go like go north. Um, go on north. That's it. That's it. Fire Emblem Three Houses. Same with John. I'm doing like Call of Duty. I'm like level ninety now on that thing. Like I've been playing. You asked me finally, dude. <laughs> well, like, that'll get reset at the end of the season, but yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I oh, they reset it. all your levels. Last time uh, they did it entirely. To, like, they put you to fifty-five. Seventy-five, 75? I think. Yeah, you go back down to seventy-five. Okay. At wow. The end of every season. Yeah, so but, that's, that's how they better. get you. I really regret not picking up that waifu, that waifu gun. Oh my god! <laughs> Get out of here, dude. <laughs> We're gonna tell your actual wife. <laughs> oh no no no! Oh, she doesn't need to know. <laughs> All right, guys. Yikes, but dude. that is it for this section. Let's move into the first bit of the podcast, best bit. And again, this is where we're going to talk about the best something video game. Brandon brought this one up. I like it. I have. I'm pretty curious where you guys are going to go with this. Um, what is the best dragon in video games? Um, Ooh, do I have I'll an answer it. for this? But we'll go with we'll go with B Ray first. Yeah, all right, well, B Ray. Whatever you, you want to do. Yeah. All right, right, I got some good ones. All right, so oh, I'll you throw might steal a, mine, but okay. All right. Um, I don't know. I, this is a pretty diverse list. Mm. Um, so honorable mention: the gaping dragon from Dark Souls. Mm. So if you guys have seen this monstrosity, it is disgusting. Yeah, dude. it's gross. <laughs> it's this thing that just like opens its entire chest, and it's just teeth everywhere. Oh and like gosh. one of its attacks is literally just grab you with its arm and just like drop you inside of its disgusting chest. That's totally the... from games. Yeah. yeah, it's the nastiest looking thing ever. But I gotta give it a shout out. Great boss dude, fight, dude. Like when that thing starts, like just a little bit of its head pops yeah. up, and you're yeah, like, "What is this little thing? thing?" And it, like, and then out of nowhere, yeah, it starts with like a little goes. lizard head, and you're like, "Oh, okay, I'm fighting like a little dragon lizard head." And then it comes up, comes up, comes up from the waterfall, and then it does, like opens up. You're like, "Oh no, dude, this is nasty." <laughs> you know, That's actually, nasty. that reminds me of like those enemies from what is it RE4, where like you think you, you shoot them in the oh, head, and yeah. they're like, and then all of a sudden their head explodes into like a bunch of tentacles, and you're like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> Do they do that Last in as well? Yeah. Don't Last they? Yeah. 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 My, yeah. They kind of change them, but it's the same basic concept, Jake. Yeah. Um, another honorable mention, uh, Zaitan from Guild Wars 2. I'll just describe this. The boss fight's not, like, super amazing, but the, 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 look this design up later. It's this flying undead dragon, but its tongues are other smaller dragons. 
It's like the most <laughs> ridiculous design. Literally, it just has like tentacles that are other dragons with heads on them. And you're like, dude, that's like the nastiest thing. And it's like green and undead and it just like flies and you fight it on a giant airship. Really, really cool design. Not an amazing fight, but cool design. Another one, I can't say too much about it because I don't want to spoil it. Have you guys played The Witcher 2? Mm, two. No. Two. So, okay, there's a dragon at the end of Witcher 2. I won't say anything more because it's very, like, cool for the plot. But just such a, such worth an honorable mention and it nearly took my number one. It's it, just such a cool dragon and, like, really cool fight, really cool plot stuff. Number one has go. got to be Dragon's Dogma. Okay. 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 Ooh, have you guys played this game or heard of no. this game? No. I know about uh, it. But... I've heard of it. I've okay. Heard of it. Dragon's Dogma. This boss fight is hands down. I challenge you to find me a cooler boss fight against a dragon because it's not going to happen. It is a 30 minute epic against this giant fucking dragon. And it has so many plot implications. Not going to spoil anything, but it's like you see this dragon at the beginning of the game kind of near the end and then the end and you're like oh shit here it goes coming down there's like some choice involved like all this stuff and the dragon what's crazy about dragon's dogma if you've ever seen gameplay or screenshots is the it's kind of like shadow of the colossus where you're like climbing these monsters and there's like a grip mechanic so you can like hold on to the creature oh nice so one thing i'll just spoil a little bit about it you're literally holding on to this dragon while it's flying in the sky and you're like stabbing it going across its wings its tail it is like hands down the fucking coolest fight that i've ever had against a dragon and then it like man i want to i don't want to like spoil but you're like shooting shit at it and then it lands and then you're going through caverns and and running from its fire (laughs) it is like the most like it's like five different phases of this boss fight it's like so intense and when you finally beat it it's this one-on-one you nothing around like you finally landed you finally like you know got it on the ground and it's just you and this dragon and what's cool about it is you can do co-op so you can like you and your friends if you want but you're all like oh we gotta kill this dragon and it's like mono mono like such an epic fight and it's a really cool um boss design too it's like somewhat generic dragon but it's got a cool voice actor too so was it dragon's dogma that was for was that ps2 or ps3 um ps3 360 and i played it on pc dark arisen and they actually just released it for switch so if you've never played this Hmm. game and you like it's kind of like souls combat but if you don't like the slow paced nature of souls it's not as frustrating and it's uh also much more cooperative and if you like mounting things like shadow of the colossus it's so much was this a ps plus freebie i want to say probably it's an older game like because like not since i yeah not since like april of 18 but maybe before because this title seems familiar to me like when you're when you're talking about it and even the title dragon's dogma i'm like yeah i've heard this game before yeah it's been out for a minute it's like a 10 year old game or something yeah Mm. worth playing but that boss fight, hands Why down, you best John? dragon. What's your what's your favorite dragon in a video game? Okay, so I have no honorable mentions. I have I only thought of one when I saw this question in the show notes. Only one thing came to mind because it spans multiple games over many many years. Bahamut from the Final yeah. Fantasy series mm. yeah. because he's literally the king of dragons in yeah, the in the Final Fantasy series. So um, he's been a boss. He's been an ally. Um, most of the, in most of the Final Fantasy games, he's like a summon, and I think yeah. the best <laughs> incarnation of this guy as a summon character is in Final Fantasy VII. Because yep. originally, when you when you summon Bahamut, you know he normally just comes onto the field, you know, and just nukes the field with his like blast of energy from his you know from his mouth. I mean, and everything is called flare, so it's mega flare. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like there's there's an upgraded version. Uh, they, I think they call it uh, like uh, Neo Bahamut ba- or like and Bahamut then, Zero or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, so so that was the last one. So the the one before that, like he lifts up like a chunk of the the <laughs> battlefield into the sky, yeah. it, where he's waiting for you in the upper atmosphere, and then he blasts everybody in the upper atmosphere yeah, with his giga insane. with his giga flare. And Holy then crap. and then you're right, the ultimate incarnation. <laughs> is um, Bahamut Zero, where <laughs> literally, like, the screen, like, the screen fades, I think it fades white, and it goes yeah. to space, and you're like, 
what the hell? What's going on? Yeah. What's going on? And all of a sudden, you see, like, out of this, you know, from the glint of the sun comes, like, this ginormous dragon, spreads all its wings, shoots its, shoots its, you know, beam out of its mouth, down onto the planet, like, you know, it, it literally, like, just, just obliterates, if it were, like, a nuclear explosion, it probably would have been, like, you know, something, some, some giant megaton number just would destroy, like, not just the battlefield, but probably, like, half of the region. Yeah. You know, and then everything turns to normal at the end. And then, yeah. you know, you probably only do about, like, 6,000 damage. But yeah, if it was so Pokemon, good. you know, like, oh, your Pidgeotto fainted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, it's like, pretty sure you oh, just melted that... the skin off our bones yeah. here, but... It's like, I'm pretty yeah. sure this, this attack, like, wins the game, but yeah. no, yeah, it's no. Nuts. <laughs> but so yeah, cool. dude, Bahamut in the Final Fantasy series, I mean, it's just... It's the it's it's my answer, and I I believe it's the only answer because of how Oof. iconic he is. You nice. know, like in Final Fantasy XIV, there's entire raids dedicated to this guy because he's a I think he's he's a boss in the, in that MMO. So um, man, oh, and he's also like the lynch. Oh, not linchman is not the right word. He's a major plot point for um, a Realm Reborn. So the, the, he destroys the old world of Final Fantasy XIV, <laughs> and that, that's the that's the story <laughs> element of like how they uh, were able to funny. reboot the game. That's so, pretty funny. I didn't know that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's all I can. I mean, I can't speak more. Yeah. I, can't speak I mean, that's enough. a great choice. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's a good choice. I've got a I've got one honorable mention. Well, I had one honorable mention. Now I kind of have two. I, I thought of one just as you guys Ooh. were talking. Uh, oh, my wow. original one was it's gonna be a shout out. It's not gonna be my number one, but in Golden Sun, the yeah. final boss that you you encounter is a dragon. It's called the uh, Fusion Dragon. Um, I just like it because you're battling on top of Venus Lighthouse. Uh, mm-hmm. It's kind of fought as so. I don't know if you, well, John hasn't gotten to this, but it's a secondary battle. There's the first phase of the battle and the second phase, just like they they do in like some of the older school JRPGs and some of the new ones. But you don't get to heal between the two. So it's a very hard battle for the first boss battle. Then it goes into the second boss battle where basically... Like, oh, you don't heal? You don't get to heal. You just go back into it. Oh, hell no. And <laughs> I remember multiple party wipes. I remember how frustrating that thing was because, I mean, this is old school, you know. And I, I remember, like, you're, like, low on items and, you you know, like, maybe one or two of your characters are knocked out. You're trying to revive them. The, and then you finally clear them. You get that feeling. You're like, yes, 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 done, done. And then this thing happens and the fusion dragon is... is We'll just say born. This thing happens, and then uh, you yeah, just have to go back into another boss battle. I think I looked it up as like I don't remember if it was like five thousand health or something. The numbers don't really matter because it's based on how much damage you do. But it was it was a ridiculous amount. It's like one of the toughest fights I've had in a game. It's an honorable mention. Second one would be uh, Have you guys? So I know like Minecraft is super casual, but have you guys actually mm-hmm. ever gone through like the story of Minecraft? It's not super no. casual, dude. It, I mean, it, it's a casual game, like in general. I know, like, I know there Dragon's is Dogma like at the and... at the center of the world, there's yeah. like a boss, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I haven't played this in like six, seven, eight years. Like, it's been a while. But when they incorporated that into the game, and they're like, "Hey, there's this thing that you got to go find, and you have to go find these items to collect this." All I remember is, I don't know if it's like an Ender Pearl or some crap. You know, but you, you throw it and it gives you a direction to go in and then you walk in that direction for a while and you have to have enough of them. You keep throwing it and then finally you get to a certain point where that thing's not going to show you where to go anymore. You go, I remember I went like underground, I found this hidden temple and then I'm like, what the hell is this? It looks all ancient and stuff and then you create a portal. It's been a while. I don't remember the exact procedures how to create this thing, but you go into it and you end up in like this ender realm this other realm where this dragon is just Holy flying crap. around in a circle wow. yeah and you're like oh shit you know like what's going on here and this is before there was any sort of like story mode i don't know what's changed yeah. like since but there's these I, mean, I think that was the story mode yeah they have pillars the top of every single uh like post and if you don't take out those pillars like those things every time that dragon flies by it it like heals its health or something so oh, shit. you have to take those out and then take him out. And he's all the while like shooting stuff at you. You know, you're getting attacked. But so a small honorable mention for that. But I'm going to go uh, with my number one game. My number one dragon from a game is for Clash of Clans. It's a mobile. No, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dragon unit in that. So Yikes, I was like, dude. I was looking up that. I was like, no. I almost but, fell out of my chair. <laughs> I was like, number one. I'm actually going to go with something old school, though. Uh, back in Pokemon Blue, 
My Ooh. favorite dragon type uh, Pokemon, and like the first one that I ever came across that I remember at least was uh, Dragon Knight. Like yeah. when I saw this thing, and big boy, yeah, dude, this was I think the number two uh, most OP character like in <laughs> in that game. So number yeah. one was Mewtwo because it was just yeah. crazy strong, so psychic works yeah. on everything. But uh, so like Dragon Knight, like that, that's basically like the finale that you have to do for the story. You have to fight against the Lance. Lance, and Lance has you know the the damn like high high level Dragon Knight, and that's one of my first memorable. Hardy wipes because when that came out, I was still fairly young. I don't remember like eight to ten range, something like that. So like this is one of my first like mobile games, like one of my games on my uh, whatever you call it, like OG Game Boy. And OG. I remember this. I just remember like facing off against him, and that thing took out like my entire party. And I actually had to go either talk to friends at school or go look up like somehow like how to you know do damage against like this dragon enemy. And just I just remember you know that thing like wiping my party. I was like, holy crap! It, and it also like a it's a kind of a callback to the first Pokemon movie. If you guys ever watched that, yep. Yeah, so yeah, that. he enters like you get to see him come in. It was a rare card like at the time too, but he enters mm-hmm. as a delivery messenger for <laughs> yeah. Mewtwo. So yeah. like even there, it's like you know Mewtwo is like my favorite. Mewtwo puts like, him in his place. Yeah, man. So <laughs> Mewtwo, I don't remember if he's like controlling him or what, but he's using him as a messenger to bring you know like mail to them. And I was like, wow, this is like a super rare Pokemon. I think the only way you could get him, if I remember, and there might be like corrections on this, but was you had to go to like the Safari Zone and you had to fish in a certain area and get lucky to catch like a Dratini or something. I don't remember. And then evolve it all the way up, mm. but it's been a while. But it was it was hard. It was hard to get this thing because it was really really strong, really powerful. So that'd be my favorite. Great uh, choice, game. dude. No. Big boy um, Dragonite. Good shit. Let's transition into the next segment, and this one's going to be devoted to John for the most part. Oh, um, here we go. We did it last week. Uh, basically, just run down your top five list of your favorite games of the decade, 2010 to 2019. Um, and there's going to be a twist at the end. I'm going to wait until you actually finish your entire no. list, though. Yeah. So it's going to be different <laughs> than what we surprises. had. But, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but, um, so um, let's hear him, John. Well, when I first saw this on the on the, on the the show notes, it said list your it was like best five games, but then in the notes it said best three games. So I, did you guys do three games or five games? We did five because we did five. Uh, okay. since you couldn't make it last week, we just did uh, uh, like uh, everybody did five just so we could do more okay. time. Right. We could do three so or five, five dude. So I, so I have a five. I have a five list. I, I nice. made a three list just in case, but I have a five list. So we'll start. And these are actually in order. Beautiful. Um, so I'm going to, yeah, so I, I ordered these. So number five, I, you know, this is recency bias, but I'm gonna say Death Stranding. <laughs> Dang. There you go. Um, High praise. Considering uh, how much time you put it in it, out, how much you've been talking about it, like yeah, I, I get it. Well, though, you know, like it, it you, you hey man, me. you don't have to defend. You just yeah. talk through your feelings, dude. It's your yeah, list. yeah. It, well, yeah. It, it beat out it beat out Metal Gear Solid Five. I actually I'm surprised yeah. I didn't put a Metal Gear on here. Um, but it you know there, there was just a lot more. There's just a lot more to this game than just um, just the delivering, and I thought um, I thought really hard about like the story. And when I went back to the Metal Gear series, while I enjoyed the gameplay more, um, Death Stranding's story intrigued me a lot more. And for me, yeah. on a personal level, I think you know story is story is very very important um, to a to a game. I mean, especially I mean modern games. What, mm-hmm. what I'm saying, we'll probably get to the. <laughs> the, the war cry a bit later but um so yeah so that was that i mean like just just the whole mix of you know how interesting they made delivering and how interesting the i mean the the, the the story concept is you know like a scientific explanation for um the afterlife holy crap i mean it, it changed everything it changed the entire planet like both like culturally and and physically too um you know without spoiling too much um it's it was basically like the the apocalypse for the planet so i mean just super super interesting um along those lines of really interesting story plus gameplay my number four is bioshock infinite yeah Ooh, man. Um, that was on jake's list about this too. Yeah. yeah so i mean the the whole concept of of multiverses and for the like story-wise yeah super intrigued me um really really solid acting by um well, the whole cast really, but especially um, God, was it Troy Baker? She, 
No, well, okay, Troy Baker is great too. Hey, was he's he in, Booker? Death Stranding, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he, that dude's he's in a bad every guy. Game. Yeah. Um, no, it, it was the one that played. Um, she played Elizabeth. Naomi Campbell in uh, in Metal Gear. You know what I'm talking about, dude. Oh, Jennifer Hale. Jennifer Hale. Holy crap! Super, super awesome performance by Jennifer Hale. Um, you know, like we look that he up. He doesn't row. What do you mean he doesn't row? Oh, oh, the twin, the twin. Oh, the twins. Yeah, I think that was her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The she's one of the twins, and like, I mean, the way her delivery and everything, super awesome. So on, on the story and the performance aspect, that was, was yeah, that's her. Great. It was just great. I could just watch a movie about about Bioshock Infinite and be great. Um, and then gameplay wise, it was really fun too. Zipping around, you know, and, mm -hmm. and shooting people. Like the gunplay oh, yeah. is super satisfying. You know, and then all of a sudden, like, once in a while, they get really satisfying. Hey, Booker, catch. And we're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> sweet. Thanks, Elizabeth. Um, so that's my number four. Good number choice. three is a personal. Is I mean, you guys made your personal, 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 personal thing. Right? Yeah, okay, whole list yeah. is personal. So I, I didn't want to, like. I wasn't sure w whether, like, we had to, like, zoom out and think, you know, in the grand scheme no, of things. No, dude. Darren's um, list was, like, the most personal you could get. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. really? Did you didn't yeah. even know some of the games. So, yeah. it was my first and, to this date, my only real MMO that I've subscribed to. And it was Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. Right um, on. That brought, me, that brought me into the world of MMOs. I, I, I fell so much in love with it. Um, I made... I made like real friends that I talk to once in a while um, in the game. Like you know, all that all that stuff. That I I thought you know I, I thought it was kind of just you know weird when you hear about people making real friendships um, from MMOs and whatnot. And then you know I played this game and I thought and I started actually making friends you know uh, even outside of the game with it. And it's it's just it's just great. It's like it shouldn't the whole, be weird. It's like minded story people. Arc for it. Oh no, yeah, it's just it's all connecting people. You know it. I mean that's all it is, and but um, just the whole like the whole aspect of you know the story, and it's the greatest revenge story I think. Not not story wise, but revenge story in terms of um, like how the game was terrible. Oh yeah, and like they, the comeback they story, just, you mean? Yeah, oh, it's a comeback story. Yeah, yeah <laughs> revenge. <sorry>. So <laughs> we're to make you guys like vengeance. our game now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, well, literally, because like Bahamut, like I said before, Bahamut comes, destroyed the destroys world. That's the so entire funny, dude. old world. That's you know, so you funny. can tell like the developers are like, you know what, all that, all that you saw before, that's gone now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I played as a healer. You know, I, um, it, you, you realize how important healers are to, to you know, part of the oh, yeah. oh, it taught it taught me about. It taught me about party party mechanics, party makeup, like how the golden know, triangle. To have, yeah, the golden triangle. How it's important to have DPS and everything that. So a lot of good things um, that introduced me to gaming wise and whatnot. Um, unfortunately, when I became a dad, that all that all <laughs> went away. Yep. So yep. Cause, uh, but anyway, so that's my number three. Number two, um, another one with a great story and a super awesome multiplayer element. Titanfall 2. Yes! Yeah, man. Oh, man, Titan I'm so happy you Fall put this on your list. 2. Dude, yes! Real quick, there's going to be a you link know, to my gameplay up here. I'm <laughs> sorry yeah. to do it, but... <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, um, this game stands on its own, you know, if it was just the pilots, but the fact that you get to oh, walk around so in lumbering good. mechs, too, and, like, the yeah, whole animation man, when good. you, you know... I mean, the whole presentation with the whole animation where you step into your mech and you, you see, like, the screens turn on one by one around you. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, I love it. I love so it. Good. And, you know, and, and, and the fact that it was made by the guys that made, you know, uh, Call of Duty, you know, the, uh, the story was awesome. The story was great. You know, you, you fall in love with the robot somehow. Like, oh. BT is, like, your bud, your buddy. Um, BT! So, yeah. So, I mean, just... It, it was it was just a whole it was a it was a perfect mix of of all these different things um and so leading with that with the great story i think the greatest game in the past decade here we go with with uh awesome gameplay and a killer story just killer writing i mean like it, all the other games on my list it puts <laughs> it to shame in terms of like the writing and the and the story portal 2 Ooh, Ooh, interesting! If you guys have not played Portal Two. Skip Portal One. Yeah. You don't no, 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 no! Don't skip Portal One. <laughs> oh, don't <laughs> say that about. Okay. 
No, okay, you okay. can't, dude. You will you not appreciate Portal 2 the way. That's true. You should. Like, true. the opening of Portal 2 is going to be, like, kind of funny, but, like, it's it hits so much better yeah, if you play yeah. Portal 1. But, holy crap, the writing of the yeah. jokes in the game yeah. with Wheatley, so good. With, with Cave Johnson. Cave Johnson. <laughs> yeah, like, everything yeah, that Cave yeah. Johnson says is a quotable quote, you know, um... I like the, his, his quote about, like, life. Like, when life gives you lemons, you know, don't make lemonade. Get mad. Yeah. <laughs> make life rue the day that, you know. Well, it's like, to give you lemons. lemons. Yeah. You know, ask so to good. see life's manager, you know. Yeah. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> so, Johnson, all, so good. All of those jokes, it, it, it holds up. You know, it's, it's one of those things, like, I judge a good story and writing by, if it were in other mediums, would it hold up? And mm-hmm. this is one of those ones. Um, just like Bioshock Infinite, just like Death Stranding, like if they made a movie out of it, if they made like a six-part series out of it, it would just be hilarious. And yeah. Would, uh, and, and then to top it off, another great song um, at the end. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was just, you know, I, you know the. <clears throat> so so that's the story and like the music aspect of it, like the gameplay aspect of it. There are some puzzles there where you're like, I don't know how I accomplished this, but. I'm a genius now. <laughs> yeah, I you do feel genius. really fucking smart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're just like, oh, I'm so smart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, like, oh, oh, oh. Just super, super solid gameplay, excellent story, excellent writing, great music. Like, it, if there's ever a game yeah. that's like a perfect in in, nice, in my my mind, mm-hmm. it would be Portal Two. You know, it, I, I'm talking about this now. It makes me want to just replay it. And you probably Dude, John, did you play like, the co-op campaign? No, because, you know, oh. I never really, I don't know why I got into it. I know. Hey, you know what we can do? <laughs> Warcry <laughs> co-op, dude. That is hey, the down. best co-op campaign so I've I've not played, played Portal 2, so... Oh, actually, we're, getting Jake Portal, Portal we're getting Jake in. We're getting Jake in. He's oh, in. So I'd be down. We gotta get... If this yeah, is the number Warcry one co-op. game of the decade, I feel like obliged yeah. to actually Jake, play you, this. You, bought, you said you bought Portal 1 yeah, and 2, right? Yeah, I have 1 and 2, because it was like $3 or something. Portal 1 will take you like a couple hours, dude. Maybe maybe 3-4 hours. And then, I would argue, John, he should probably play the single player before he goes into co-op. You exactly, don't play co-op yeah, either, yeah. but yeah, I, don't I play think the co-op in. play yeah. single player first, and then co-op once you're like really good at the mechanics, because co-op is like, all right, now you got to deal with another fucking person in their portal. So good luck. Yeah. but it's yeah. really fun too. Portal one, Portal one is a simple. It's a it's a really short run through, Jake, because yeah. it was a um, it was just, it was part of like a larger orange collection, box. right? The orange yeah, box. Orange yeah, orange box. Yeah. So, Which side tangent is the craziest thing to ever exist. Orange Box has Portal, Half Life Two, Half Life Two Episode Left One, Episode Dead. Two, Left for Dead. Yeah. Or no, not Left for Dead. It had um, Team oh, Fortress no? Two. Oh, okay, Team okay, Fortress okay, Two. Okay. But just All like right. the fact that they released that as like one game with like so many of those games are like legendary, <laughs> like <ridiculous. laughs> no. side tangent. But yeah, it was on. Portal. So John, oh, here's your oh, twist. Man. So yeah, last week, what we had to do was like I'd have to you know re- remove a game from my list and you know like uh, take one from Brandon's or take one from Darren's, put it on mine, and then justify it. For you, since there's no one else to remove it you, or nobody else for you to swap with, you're going to remove one from your list. And this game is deleted from existence. This game never came out and never deleted will come from out. Deleted existence. So you have to oh. choose a game off your list that will never exist. Let never have, at, never Let will. me look at my list and let me just <laughs> let me cry a little bit. And yeah, and I got this idea like through Brandon a little bit. If yeah. we were gonna have more time, which I don't think we're going to in the end, we're gonna do like a little. Uh, 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 it's called Kill Your Babies type game where you love a game yeah. so much and you all individually kill it. But I don't want to remove anything from my list. But yeah, yeah, yeah. here we go. <laughs> you had a gun but to again, my head. It'll never exist. No sequels. No prequels. Well. Um, I mean, this game really didn't have any sequels after it, so I would remove Bioshock Infinite. That Ooh. game never existed. Yeah. Elizabeth never existed. That twin that you like, the voice acting, goodbye. All gone. that DLC gone. Uh, you know, and and I, it, it's for a really, really, really dumb reason. Yeah. But I mean, I guess um, I wanted more out of that world. And I was kind of disappointed that, you know, mm. uh, I think, what's his name? Ken Levine, the guy that, like, yeah. the guy that made the entire Creator. series, he kind of just, like, faded into, you know, I think other, he's back. Other things. Is he he's back? He's making, he said he's making something. He said that for, like, six okay. years. So we'll okay. see what he makes. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, the, the, the whole game, the whole game just, like, faded from my memory until, you know, you brought up like, the best games of the decade. But, um, yeah, man. you know, that and, like, I think, uh, 
it could use a better frame rate on PS3, but I, this is just nitpicking at this point. Oh, you played I, three? I, that's fair. I mean, like, unless I played it on PC, you know, I, I guess if I replay it on PC, I could just play it in my glorious 60 frames per second. But Dude, yeah. that's how I played it. 4K, <laughs> yeah, 60, the entire game. But it was gorgeous. Yeah, man, I, I really hate removing it from that. <laughs> it's gone. It's God. dead. I can't, I can't, I can't, like, I couldn't remove it. It's like, yeah, it's literally choosing, like, your, your yeah. children and, like, which one do you like the least? <laughs> uh, John's list of four guys. How'd you like it? Yeah, <laughs> no. no, I will say, though, John, very, very good list. Yeah, man. So yeah, glad you, you gave Titanfall 2 some love. That game yeah. is yeah. such a fun game. That was on my top 10 list, like, over the last decade. And whenever I was, like, racking and stacking stuff, deciding whether or not to put it on there, really, really liked it. I think I should, like, I still haven't touched the multiplayer. I just did all, the, like, the single player story stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I really did more than just my, I think, nine episode playlist on my channel, and, like, actually went off and actually try to do some more of the achievements, maybe gone multiplayer, like, gone off, like, super, super invested in it. I mean, that game, that game was good. That, that's probably, like, Probably the best single player campaign I've ever played, like ever. And yeah. it's it's well, I'm sorry for like a like a first person shooter. First person I'd say. shooter, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, I'd agree. And like I really like Call of Duty one. Like I've liked a lot of these other ones, and this is a you know it, it's it's up there. It was definitely like up there on my my list. I as would well. say if you're gonna go multiplayer, go um, you you played on PC because I I remember booting up Titanfall two. Well, like, PS4 now it's gonna be over. big because uh, it yeah, was just a free title. PS Plus, yeah. Yeah, so oh, like, right. I heard it's like oh. eighty thousand players or something recently. A couple weeks ago, oh, People oh playing, we should dude. get back on. <laughs> yeah, dude, dude, I love it. We should get well, back. You on. have it on PC, my, like, though, all right? my progress well, is still there. PC. So I got it on PC. Yeah. Dang. Oh, you got it on PC? Okay. Wait, uh, there might be crossplay. I'm not sure. No, maybe not. I don't think so. No, it's before the like, era of crossplay. Like, yeah, not like Call of Duty. You know, so 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 along that point, before you move on, Jake. Yeah. Um. So the fact that Respawn did such an excellent single player campaign, I mean. Do you think that's why EA chose them to do Jedi Fallen Order? Maybe. Or maybe Respawn was convincing enough to be like, hey, we yeah, know your guys' stance on single player, but you know, we, we can make a really good game like this and it'll yeah. be received well and they, yeah. they sold somebody. That's I, in my I don't queue, know. by the way. I mean, like, I, I really need to finish Death Stranding, which I don't think will ever happen anytime soon. I might just have to play it <laughs> anyways, but Jedi Fallen yeah. Order. Ever since I saw the Rise of Skywalker, I'm like, I want to play with the yeah, lightsaber. Right. Damn yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. It's on my list. <clears throat> so, anyway. Let's move on to the War Cry, guys. We kind of teased it last Woo! episode. This one, I believe, comes courtesy of John, right? Like, you brought this up yeah, uh, this a week or two ago. Yeah, question I put up. So. Um, so, here's what John said. How important is story to games? Do all games need to tell a story? Old, early Golden Age games like Atari and other, like, smartphone-type gaming, they, they don't even have a story. Like, they don't have something to begin with, but is this, like, required to actually have a game be considered good? So, what are your so, thoughts? Yeah. So, if, if, I may, if, I may, if I may chime in on my own question. Yeah. At first, I, when I wrote that question, I, I, I knew the answer. I had an answer in my head, and it was that, no, no, you just need gameplay. Gameplay is important, and this and that. Well, over the past couple of weeks, since we're talking about, like, best games of the decade and whatnot, I realized... How important story is to gameplay and you know even games like check your top like, five list like man. Astro what game yeah is like not asteroids get story, and uh, and like pitfall like all those games from the golden era from the golden age of, of gaming um they all had like a like some semblance of you know it, it's not it's not story per se but yeah, it's like right. this is what your little blob of pixels is and mm -hmm. this is your blob of pixels you know objective that can be considered a story so at first I was like, no, you just need solid gameplay. But then I realized, and actually after thinking about a bunch of indie games that didn't really have any story at all, that you know that's actually not the case in my opinion. Uh, games actually do need a solid story. Um, I don't know. It's not much of a war cry anymore. Now that I just debunked <laughs> my own question. I've just debated myself, but yeah. So like war what cry I wrote, with yourself. Kind of like my own thoughts on it. Mirror years in a way, but I, I don't think it's mandatory. I don't think like they're mandatory to have a really, really good story. I can have just as good of a time with a casual platformer as I can with like a heavy story based game like uh, Last of Us. I, I can, I mean, Celeste wouldn't be as good of an example because that's, that actually does have like an interesting story, yeah. story and, and like an underlying tone to it, like a theme. But any platformer, you know, like I, I can have a really, really good time with it if it doesn't have a, a story or if it's just 
Mario has to go get the princess and you get like one dialogue box the entire game. Like I can still right. enjoy it just as much. Um, but obviously looking at my list of games that I have with me, my list of top five games, your list, Brandon's like most everybody's has something that's going to be more like story heavy or something mm-hmm. impactful to them. Like it actually yeah. has a good story. <laughs> um, it's like usually, 10 years down the line, how, how, you know, how impactful is Untitled Goose Game going to be in, you know, but is this still a it, good it game? It could be. Yeah, I don't know. But Would you still play that game 10 years down the line? Like, if that was a good game to you then, like, if Minecraft was a good game with the crappy story, look how well that sold, you know? Like, look mm-hmm. at this thing. Top lists. Uh, okay. So, it's, so like, I, I would say that it's not mandatory, but it's a, a game can still kind of stand on its own with just the gameplay itself. But those but. games still have a story, just not, like, a, just not a super cohesive you know what I mean? Like, there's there is a thing to Minecraft, like you said earlier. There's a thing with, you know, the dragon at the yeah, end. Yeah, but Minecraft whatnot. multiplayer. Well, I, I have some I have some thoughts if if you're done. Okay. Yeah, right. I mean no, no, that, no, that's yeah. pretty much it. The only other thought I had was like for like Celeste. Like, okay, <clears throat> that exact example. You know, like it, it didn't have a super heavy story, but I one thing it left me with like the little bit that I did have was like, do you guys remember the floating feather scene? I'm not going to spoil what it meant. Yes. But yep. There's a feather that's like floating yeah. and you have to, yep, so yep, yep. that's impactful to me. That thing stuck yeah. with me. Games like anything that has something like that, that's going to stick with me. So that's where I'm going to say like a story is more impactful to me personally if it does have that. I'm going to remember that forever. Maybe I won't remember something in Minecraft where I built a castle eight years ago and it's overgrown at this point. And you're like, like I don't care. But, but what were you thinking, Brandon? So here's what I was going to say. I think... For a game to be impactful, it has to have an emotional impact. And I think that emotional impact can happen because of a few different reasons. I think story is the most common way to have an emotional impact with a player. If you have a very invested story with characters and ups and downs, you're more likely to feel sad or feel extremely happy or or all these different emotions with that story. I don't think it's mandatory, though, because I think I was going to go back to the Minecraft example. If you're playing Minecraft multiplayer with your friends, you're kind of making your own story, but you're having an emotional attachment without having like a narrative backbone to the game, right? You and your friends, you'll never forget that time when you were all, you know, bunkered together and you defended against the zombies, right? That wasn't really like you're kind of making a story as you go up. So it's kind of like an emergent story. Let's say I'll give Mario, for example, or um, like really hard platformers like VVVVV or um, uh, Meat Boy, Super Meat Boy, right? Those types of games, like, yes, there's story, but it's for someone to have an emotional attachment to it, it's more often because of the mastery of the gameplay, right? Like, they're so satisfied and they're so, they're so you know, elated once they beat a level, right? So that's kind of my crux of the argument here is, like, it doesn't need to be story, that is like the core impacting feature of the game, but it is probably the most common part of it. Like we're talking about Life is Strange. That is the the story of that game was what had the emotional resonance. Uh, another example I was going to call out, Breath of the Wild. This was my game you know, of the decade last time. Right. The emotional impact for me was not the story in Breath of the Wild. I want to make that very clear. Right. Hmm. But the reason that Breath of the Wild was my game of the decade was the emotional highs, to your point, from the gameplay, from the sense of exploration. So that is something that is unique and separate from the story. Yes, the story kind of like adds to it, uh, but it's the the feelings that you get from that specific component, from the environments, from the gameplay, from exploring the world. So let me just now, let me get your understanding yeah, correctly. So you're saying like you create your own drama basically with yeah that's another way to look at it right so the 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 gameplay if it's like so engaging or so frustrating or so satisfying or what have you you create emotional attachment to it and in in many instances that could be like making your own story it's like making your own minecraft story it's hey remember that part of breath of the wild when i went over here and explored this and found this you're telling that story to someone i think the the crux of the question here is how important is it for a game designer to bake in you know what we consider a traditional linear storyline like something from a movie or a book Mm. and so that argument i think it's very dependent on 
how open the game design is, right? If your game design is Breath of the Wild, if your game design is Minecraft, that is uh, that allows for these emergent storylines, it's not important. Who cares? Because you're going to make your own stories anyway. If the entire point of the game is Last of Us, Uncharted, God of War, where you're going through beat by beat something that a creator has made for you to experience, then it's obviously very important because the developers have a story that they want to share with you that they want you to experience. And um, it's interesting because I, I look back at like games that I've placed a lot of time. I probably skew more towards those linear stories. But like I said, Breath of the Wild still my number one game of the year. And I thought the linear traditional story was not that impressive. It was game the, of the decade. Your game of the decade, right? The game Ooh. of the decade. Um, it was because of the, the emergent stories that I made as I explored that world. So it's kind of a, you know, a hard question to answer. The end of the day, I say no. You don't need a story, but you have to have something that allows the player to get emotionally attached and make kind of make their own stories if you're not going to give them. One. Well, also, it's going to be based heavily on personal preference. There's like I know Darren's like he's not as invested in those kind of games. Something that leans more towards the story aspect. If it's like too much of that story, like you're playing that that more linear kind of like what you're saying. Like he may not be as interested in that. So to each individual person, like maybe he would prefer one without a story or. Right. You know, so like that's gonna be subjective, but good war cry. Let's uh finish up here with the subscriber Q and A. This one came courtesy of Dan, I believe, a uh, coworker of ours. Um, he was wondering why games are still costing like sixty dollars when games nowadays can be uh, released essentially unfinished and then patched later. So like, why not? I guess release it at thirty bucks and then it gets patched on the road, or you know, additional DLC comes in, you pay extra. Why is it? For the past 20 plus years 30 years is it costing like still 60 bucks well isn't it i mean i i i don't know i mean i think it's i think it's pretty obvious you know the the, the amount of work that goes into the amount of man hours that goes into like triple a titles you know you you have artists you have designers you have level you know level designers programmers i mean people's people's time means money right so um you know, all that stuff goes into it. Marketing, there's an entire department developed to just marketing the game. So they probably take a chunk of it too, maybe. I, <laughs> so, I mean, this, there's, back in the day you could justify it like, yes, you know, we need to make the chips for the Super Nintendo cartridges and, and, and the Game Boy cartridges because they were produced in a factory. And, you know, this is a, the, the, you know those machines cost money and this and that. Well, I mean, all of that production cost now moves away from the physical and, now to like actual man hours of of doing stuff so yeah now i think this question kind of brings up some interesting points about like the economics of making games right and i agree with john i think triple a games are very expensive to make i think another factor to consider here with like a 60 dollar game is what is the market willing to pay for right and the other thing too if people have this idea in their in their head that you know sixty dollars is a quality game, like that means it's a really well made game, they put a lot of money into it. Right. You know, yeah. if a sixty dollar game releases with a ten million dollar budget versus a hundred million dollar budget, like they're still sixty dollars, right? But to a consumer, they're gonna look at that sixty dollars and be like, wow, this they must have put so much time and effort into the sixty dollar game. So that's the perception thing. What am I the getting for my sixty dollars? You know, right. Yeah, they equate right. it with quality, right? Yeah. So that's one factor. Now, the other factor, too, and I don't know, like, statistically speaking, if this is true, but I would imagine the cost of developing a high-end game has gone up over time. That is my assumption, right? Mm -hmm. And so the other trick here is, you know, game prices have not increased with inflation. They've been $60 pretty consistently. AAA, at least. We're going to get to indie games in a second. But game developers and publishing companies have tried to has, you've seen it they've tried to get creative with how they get more money out of the consumer and so we've skewed more towards microtransaction downloadable content free to play with a, you know cosmetic items like they've experimented with those different types of models and oh by the way they're also doing that for $60 games so they're they're finding ways to get more yeah. money than $60 out of consumers mm -hmm. so when you say a $60 game is is the norm it's actually not anymore i would argue that the norm is you know, sixty dollars, if that. But then there always there's typically going to be some other sort of microtransaction, downloadable 10, content, 20, some, thirty dollars extra, right? Games some way to service. get more money. Games as a service. So that yeah. that model is is really important. Now, when you talk about 
I would argue that there are an abundance of lower than $60 games. I think they're not in the AAA space, but indie games, you know, there are so many games. We were talking about this other 20 to 40 shop and get 99 cent crap yeah. e game, you know, eShop games. Yeah. I think mobile gaming really pushed the the envelope in terms of what you know, games are priced on the lower end of the spectrum. And I think that brings with it a lot of those quality questions we we're talking about, right? Like a lot of people look at $60 and they're like, oh, this is probably the highest quality. And it, it wasn't until maybe games like Warcry, maybe games like Fortnite, uh, not Warcry, Warframe. Warcry, um, we'll take it. Yeah, Warcry. <laughs> War, it's a game Warframe, I'm developing um, on the side. <laughs> yeah, Warframe, Fortnite, Apex Legends. Those are some of the earlier free-to-play, high-quality AAA games. And it wasn't until those types of games that I would argue consumers felt comfortable from the quality of what they would get with free-to-play in those lower-end mobile games. But now yeah, we're starting for, to see... Yeah. You go ahead. No, I was going to say, it used to be... For, for a while there, it seemed like it was a race to the bottom. You know, right. Like, <laughs> how cheap yeah. can we make it? How quick can we make it? And how much money can we extract from the consumer? Right. General, in the meantime? general game market, uh, it's been for a long time, like the... Uh, your console, they're going to be taking a hit. So whenever, like, I mean, not always, always, but most of the time, like, Nintendo will ship out consoles. I think they even did with the Switch. They were they had sold out of consoles in the States around release time. So Japan was manufacturing more and paying money for additional flights just to send stuff more, like, over to the States. Like, they were taking heavy losses, like, originally, yeah, originally, yeah, originally just, to, yeah. just so they could make a lot, like, huge profits on their software games and dlc like you guys were saying first black ops game i actually looked this up that game sold over 650 million dollars in five days uh that became the global record for any movie book or game at the time and wow. gaming just keeps growing like I, yeah. I i saw a chart on wikipedia maybe i'll pop it up here uh like in post but the one i saw was like the gaming market yeah like you'll see pc gaming console gaming you'll see everything else like going up just it's still developing over time, and it's still growing over time. The industry's getting bigger. The biggest gap was mobile gaming, and I was surprised yeah, about that. Yeah, mobile's huge. I did not. You know, okay. It's if huge. I, if I may. Huge. Yeah. If, I, I know we're running out of time here, but if I may, like, just go on a brief tangent. Isn't Dude, it kind of weird when you when you talk to some people and you like you say when you play when you play video games and the other guy, or the other person just goes like, oh well, you know, I don't really game. Isn't it weird how like they dismiss like a medium like that? It's like saying like, oh, I don't, I don't watch movies. You know, like, oh, I, I don't, you know. That's why I'm mean, with sports. I mean, everybody yeah, has their the, own preference. The, the you know? challenge, too, is gaming is such a sports, new medium. No. I don't. Yeah. Right? Not and so all. that, my, my, my whole point is you, you have people who, who are older generations, maybe, or just, like, didn't grow up with that in their house. And, like, we were talking about gaming can be an expensive hobby, right? You have to pay for these consoles. Mobile is the first scenario where I feel like a lot of people are getting into it. And so that's probably why it's been so profitable because of the accessibility of it, right? You don't have to own an expensive console. You can get, you know, how many smartphones these days have access to the App Store or the you know, Google Play Store. You can just download some free games and start playing and potentially yeah. putting your credit card in. But I think the so essence I, of my question is, like, like what, what, what constitutes a gamer? Because, like, basically mobile yeah, it's, gamers it's now stupid. they're gamers right <laughs> so yeah. you know when, yeah. when they when they when people come up to you and give you that sort of like reaction you know they, they're basically projecting onto you saying well i'm not that kind of gamer you yes. know i'm not the yeah. i'm not the stereotypical gamer but i do yeah. play candy crush on the side you know like yeah we're all i gamers think then. that that's gamers that's, too, so. that's kind of a, <laughs> a societal distinction where like in many people's minds like a gamer <laughs> someone who buys consoles buys console games or downloads PC games and like handheld games, things like that. I, I don't think people look at smartphone games as being like that much of a, of a time and money investment, which is why it typically is not like a gamer mentality. Mm, okay. All right. So I didn't, I didn't mean to derail the, uh, the conversation, Jake. <laughs> no, that's, I mean, that's what grinded my gears. Fair point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a war cry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I could go into one, but um, yeah, that's it. unless you guys have like any other thoughts about like podcasts, anything else to add, that pretty much wraps it up. Happy so, New Year! Yeah, Happy New Year, yeah, guys! Happy, so, happy year. holidays! Just gonna, uh, I won't be here next year or next year. I won't be <laughs> here for the next. Both week. are accurate, actually. Next year <laughs> is next week as well. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so Darren will be replacing but, John next week, I think. So they'll be swapping out. But yeah, uh, thank you guys for joining us for this podcast. Uh, if you guys are new here, consider subscribing to continue listening to all our content. Again, we're live on all the podcast platforms that are in the description below. And uh, thank you guys and take care. Peace. Later. See ya.